Fly me to the moon Let me play among the What's up, pimps? Bruce Lee is a man. No, a legend. A legend that mastered the art of beating the living hell out of people. An art which he turned into a full-fledged career on the big screen. He was the only man to ever beat the legendary Chuck Norris from hit 2023 game Crime Boss Rock K City. And he is such a legend, he made up the martial arts style of doing whatever shit looked the coolest, even if... It didn't make a modicum of sense. And doing whatever looks the coolest without making a modicum of sense is exactly what Sleeping Dogs is all about. Which is why this game is unquestionably his favorite. And I can already hear you clacking away at your keyboard saying, Uh, oh, Fleek didn't he die in 1970 long before Sleeping Dogs ever came out? Pimp! <laughs> You're, you're getting all caught up in the details. Be in denial if you want, but if you seek happiness, if you seek purpose, then let me tell you all about the best martial arts game ever made. Sleeping Dogs is all the hallmarks of my favorite games. Takedowns, huge budgets, guns, God bless, bigger budgets, and questionable rules of engagement policies. It's also the first game that taught me the proper way to fetch a taxi. The New Yorker way, if you will. By getting into a head-on collision with it first. It's like GTA with good gameplay. Or Batman, but with a substantially higher social credit score. And I know that Hong Kong is technically a whatever the hell that means, and technically in the game they speak Cantonese, not Chinese, but technically... I don't give a shit. I wrote down too many China jokes to go back now. A man who never eats pork bun is never a pork bun. Serve it up. Hey boys, this is the fucker who's been trashing up. <laughs> Let's get this rolling with a little bit of honesty. I'm a dealer. I deal in truths. And the truth is, this game is loaded with jankery. I'm, I'm talking sending you to the moon three times in one campaign jankery. The Agent Smith police officer's jankery. And the throwing a knife but it bounces off of a nearby ragdolling body and kills you instead jankery. Even some intended things are jank, like when an enemy dies, they turn into a waterbed. Or the Just Cause physics engine, where a wheel gets shot out, so then naturally, of course, the engine fucking explodes. There is no bounds to the jank, but for me, I was born of the jank, molded by it. If I have to wade through two miles of funny shit to play a top tier game, then by God, let me get the scuba suit. Now let's talk about the plot. The actual meta story is tier three emotional damage. So we will steer around that in an effort to ward off the ministry. Instead, Let's talk about the fun parts. You are a rat! Sorry, I mean, you play as a rat. A glorious CCP-employed rat serving under the Hong Kong Police Department. And you are tasked with infiltrating the triad scene of Hong Kong so that you can find a way to sleep some dogs out of revenge for what they did to your not-so-big-smile family. Don't say I never did anything for you. But once you get into the disgusting, war-crime-filled life of a triad, you discover that this shit is pretty swanky, I'm not gonna lie. It's all fast cars, fast fish, and fast women. What more can a man want? Only trouble is when you show up and then five police cars show up and then you change outfits and become part of the police squad, people tend to bridge that gap pretty quick. And then you have to bridge a gap between them and the fat fold of our glorious Buddha. Even your gang interrogates you because somehow they got this outrageous idea that me, I am a police officer of the law. I don't know where they would get this false notion. I will fucking turn off this body cam and show you real justice if you even think about it first. It's preposterous. Now that you semi-understand the plot, let's talk about the triad and police gameplay loops because they're pretty goddamn awesome. You all know that I am the best police officer on this side of the Mississippi, known for my trigger discipline, my good temper, and my tactical superiority on the field. Sleeping the dogs has given me the opportunity to prove that I am also the beast of the east. You've heard of police brutality? We'll get ready for police fatality, brother. Side activities include beating up loiterers, shooting loiterers, rear-ending and executing a traffic stop, hostage negotiation, 
The suspect was hit. Nice shot. And hacking. I'm sorry. Hacking. This has about the difficulty of putting on a blindfold and oh, trying to put the beautiful. right shape into the right hole. It might take a minute. But if it takes anything more than that, our glorious China will have to send you to a special amusement park we call the labor camps. Still more advanced than watchdog. I also have a no hostage policy, as in, being that I'm a staunch supporter of the Fred White and Blue, God bless, I don't negotiate with turds. Mission Command does not condone this stance. And on the other hand, the triad side activities don't exist. That's just the main missions. You don't need any extra missions because it's already very easy to improve your triad social credit score. All you have to do is pretend like you're participating in a peaceful protest for a few minutes and you'll get three stars just like that. Meanwhile, I try to LARP as your average American police officer and everyone loses their minds. Now I have to do 10 side missions to keep pace with my thug progression. You see what I'm getting at? I think the closest thing that you can get to probably a triad side quest are the face missions. My favorite of which being this one, where the guy commits escalating crimes against the Popo, starting with... What do you need? All right, wait in a second. Ah! Let's go, let's go! And escalating to... You're not gonna shoot anyone, are you? Hell no. Uh, let's go. Now time to talk about the grind. Although I wish I could simply become whole man by eating pork bun, upgrading is instead tied to the activities I previously discussed. Unless of course you're talking about the upgrades that actually matter, because the vast majority of new moves that improve the combat drastically and actually add combos to the game are obtained by turning statues into Yoda over here. Give him a statue and he will let you beat his defenseless white belt students bloody until they have to drink out of a sippy cup just so that you can grasp the idea of how to break a man's leg. Not for real though, YouTube. Look, he's all good. Well, yeah. Or how to roundhouse kick someone. Or how to pummel someone's face in. It's real Anakin Skywalker type shit. This does take us very smoothly into the prime rib though. I'm talking about combat. I love this combat because it is simple and fun and I am a simple man. It plays a lot like Assassin's Creed in terms of that XXXYXX cathartic kill fist palooza vibe. But whereas I said Black Flag could be beaten by a small toddler Sleeping dogs would require at least a young primate because in this game you also have to hold X from time to time. That being said, this game is similar to the Assassin's Creed games in the only way that matters, and that is takedowns. That hands-free soul removal service that looks dope as hell. Now, it does it a little differently from most games, though. Instead of having a final kill takedown like Assassin's Creed or a button press tied to a Riz meter like Yakuza, it's more of a Red Robin's bottomless fries type deal. If there was a bottom when you run out of air ducts to stuff people into. As long as you have a fish hook or a fish tank, or an air duct that isn't occupied, then you can schwack the hell out of some people using takedowns. But when you run out of said items because every takedown is one use, that's that's pretty much it. Once the spike is occupied, you can't start piling it up like a shish kebab. It just doesn't work like that. At that point, what you have to start doing is looking for railings so that you can launch people over them. I'm gonna keep saying words just so that I can keep showing you this because this move brings me immense joy. Don't have an edge near you? Don't worry about it, pimp. Then you can always snap their neck with a running head start and a mighty heave, then all the rest is just a whole lot of flying knees and kicking. Unless you change your outfit to one with much more power like the drunken fighter. This gives you the power of an alcohol addiction. Although you do have the Hitman, Ip Man, Metal Man, Bruce Man, or GSP outfits, at most these give you maybe one new move. But with the drunken fighter, flying kick turns into flying body with a pose when you land. Your left and right counters turns into an opportunity to drink, and then you have the defib punch and the epileptic drop kick. This completely ruins your combos, but it is worth. Before I move on though, Honorary mention to the Wukong outfit that lets you summon a magic staff and the Just Cause 2 outfit because it signals that I am better than you. I do have to admit something to you though. I did omit a move set from the last part there and that is the art of the strap. The art of freedom. The art of shooting little soul pictures. You know how I said this game was the best Batman game? Probably not because I deleted that line. Well, it's also a pretty damn good Punisher game except you ride around in a minivan and have to take your guns off of police officers on their lunch break or off of the criminals because despite strict Hong Kong gun laws, somehow I can still walk into an underground tunnel and find a bukkake of military grade lead. Imagine that. Which forces me to use ancient Chinese wisdom to launch myself to safety. And I'll speed run the rest of this because I really want to talk about cockfighting. The strap, the metal, the heater, the gun feels fantastic. However, 
What Danny Phantom bullshit am I looking at here? It appears their leg hitboxes are about as real as Taiwan. Anyways, I'm done talking about guns. Because, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Reminder to my ministry-administered pimp that that is in reference to the biological term for male chickens, and uh, I, I don't know what, what else it could possibly be misconstrued for. Anyways, whip out your cock, and I'll show you mine so that we can engage in war. CF, for short, is short. It's incredibly short. To be truthful, after three rounds, I started to wonder if I actually even made it in. Still, there are two things that you must know about CF. Number one... <laughs> Sun Tzu. That is wisdom from the bird that you should always bet on because he never loses. And the second thing you need to know is his birds are best. My birds are best. His birds are best. My birds are best. My cup is the best. And the next side activity is karaoke. Shit, wrong game. Karaoke. There's a special place in hell for the guy that decided to bind this mini game to the left joystick. Great songs, though. And to top it all off, we have the most important side quest line in Sleeping Dogs, Spittin' Game. What's up, pimps? It's time to get to bitches, yo. Have you seen my Lamborghini? Neither have I, because I have a Bugatti in Forza. The chicks dig it. There are about six dates that you can do in this game, and the difference between you and me is, I've done all of them consecutively. Wake up, hit up, bang up, hit up, bang up, repeat. One calls being all jealous, saying I cheated, blocked. When your life is the hustle, your sleep is the grind. I'm gonna put that on a shirt and get some 12-year-old commie factory workers to print me 10,000 shirts on demand. I can't stop myself. Now, now, now all the women don't, don't usually call after the first date, but uh, that's because I never come second. Always fast, always first, always leave them wanting more. Pimps University coming hard, coming soon. Watch your eyes. Anyways, back to my whole point for making this video. This game goes on sale for $3 every time the CCP gets praised by an American. So you by God, if you don't bad. buy it, I will send you to the labor camps. Zaichen Pitao Ke!